Hey everybody, I'm doing a pivot table tutorial uh, as a follow up to my last pivot table tutorial which was a little bit more basic. This one's going to be analyzing a set of fake company data with team member name, team member number, department, the date, and how much overtime these individuals worked. And we're going to answer these 10 questions which will give a good example of different ways to uh, break down your pivot table data and get the valuable information that is hidden in the raw data. Um, if you don't use the pivot table it would take you a long time and it would be very complicated and uh, tedious to answer these questions. So I hope you can take this and take this into your uh, personal use or your work environment and make some pivot table goodness. Alright let's get started. To begin, we'll just create the pivot table. Um, as you know, you can just select any field in the data range. Go to the Insert menu in Excel 2007 and click Pivot Table. The pop-up will automatically select the appropriate data range as long as you have headers in all of your columns. So we're going to click OK, and this takes us to our Pivot menu. Uh, to begin, I think the first question was, um, which department worked the most overtime total? And to answer that, we are going to drag department into the row label. And now you see the five departments represented. And we're going to drag the overtime amount into the values uh, subtotal. So now you see which department worked the most, and it was production control. If this was a big set of data that maybe you couldn't eye that and see which one the highest was, you can use the max function equals max and simply refer to the uh, value range which is B4 to B8 and you can see that it is production control. Um, so that probably wasn't the best way to see if that was the max value. Let's improve on that. Let's do if cell B4 equals max of B4 to B8. And lock that range. We'll say biggest value. Otherwise, we'll just make it a dash. Dash. Biggest value, okay. There we go. So let's answer question one was production control. Question two is which department worked the most overtime in May of 2012? So there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, the best way, if that's the only question you have to answer regarding the date, we would add it to the report filter. If you need to see a lot of different dates, we could add it as a column or as a row. So let's add it to the report filter. But before we do that, we're going to have to add month to this date. To do that, we're going to use the text formula and refer to the date value. And we want to return it in month format, which is MMMM if you want the full month spelled out. It's MMM if you want the abbreviated month, and it's MM if you want the numeric month. So let's see what that question was again in May 2012. So in this question, we can do month, month, comma, apostrophe, year, year, and that'll be in month and year format. Let's add a column header to this month year and in the pivot table we can refresh the pivot table and it will add the new data that we added we can add that as a report filter and now we can select that as the report filter so the question said May 2012 we will pick May 2012 now the answer to that question is production control once again okay so, question PC. Question three is asking which team member worked the most overtime in 2011? Alright, so 
let's separate this a little bit. I just want to put month in one column and year in another column equals text of the date comma year 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 and copy that formula down to the bottom now the question was which team member worked the most overtime in 2011 in sheet 4 we can refresh to add the new data for month and year that we put in there I'm going to put year in the report filter select 2011 I'm going to get rid of department from the row label and I'm going to put team member name we can put in a formula to see which one had the greatest value if before Jose Pierce is the winner there alright so copy his name paste that into the answer sheet here format cell alignment shrink to fit there we go okay which department worked the most overtime on Sundays in 2013 so I've already shown you one way where you use the um, report filter to narrow down your results that's good if you're looking for single questions like this but most of the time when you're analyzing data you're gonna wanna analyze each year and each month and each day of the week or whatever not just one at a time so let's start doing it that way for the rest of the questions okay so the question here was uh, about the day of the week and in the year so let's add the day of the week um, to the raw data which we need to do with the text format again formula again text of the date comma day 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 close quote take that formula down to the bottom and refresh the pivot table so it's added let's put the days across the uh, rows and we'll put the year across the columns and now we have each day of the week across the years how many hours overtime sum was worked on each of those days Okay, the question specifically was asking most overtime on Sundays in 2013, which department? So we need to add department to this. And now we have, um, let's put it here, Sundays, each department, 2013, and the answer is production control once again. What month did IT work the most overtime in June 2012? That doesn't even make sense. Who made this test? Let me fix that. What month did IT work the most overtime in 2012? Now that makes sense. Let's put year as the filter and month as the row, this uh, column this time. So in our year filter, we can narrow it down to 2012 only. And it would be August. Yes, August is the only one over 300. Okay, that's the answer. August. How many team members' names start with the letter S? Okay, here's another scenario where we have to add data to our raw data. And we're going to do team member first name. All right, let's do... Uh, the length of this text field minus the location of the space so we'll do find a space which is quote space quote oops sorry guys find the quote space quote within this text So now we have the value of 7, which would be the right. This is, by the way, a um, really roundabout way of doing this. I'll show you an easier way in a minute. Aha, there we go. All right, so uh, basically it took the 
I found the length of the entire string of characters and then it found how many characters over the space was and it subtracted that from the total length and then it took from the right hand side that many characters and returned the value of those. Alright, so let's delete all that. Since there are two columns and we're going to do uh, something called text to column which is in the data menu in 2007 and um, we use what's called delimited and that'll let us search for the comma so we can say wherever there's a comma we're going to separate those two names and we go to next and we finish and now we have the two fields separated so we'll do last name and first name um, I actually only needed one column, sorry about that. If you didn't insert the, any columns there though, it would have had to overwrite one of these columns that had data in it. Alright, so um, let's try something out that is going to be unsuccessful. I'm going to go ahead and warn you. But add the letter as a row and count the number of occurrences by adding any non-numeric field. Um, We'll just count the number of occurrences. So there are 1,120 occurrences for first name starting with S, but the data is laid out so that each day the team member name repeats because they worked overtime again. So I'm going to add a formula that will be a flag. Uh, let's just say to say value of one if it's the first time it occurred, and higher than that if it's not. So let's do a count if employee range if it equals this employee number but we want to make it a dynamic range so it's going to start with the value E2 and as we go down the list it's going to expand the range that it's looking at so down the rows here you see that it's looking at um, all of the employee numbers above it but not below it so that that'll give a flag of one for the first time that it's counted and it'll count up from there so let's add that to our pivot table and add that as a report filter and now we can see there's only one team member whose first name starts with S Okay, how many employees have an employee number below 3,500? To do this, we want to separate our employee number from the EMP. And to do that, uh, since they're all a fixed number of characters, we can use the write function. And we can even make this an if statement and just say if the value of that employee number is less than 3,501 or was it 35,000? Yes. Then we say 1, otherwise we say 0, 3,500, not 35,000. Now we use our two flags here. We use the one for employee number and the one for count and the answer is one what day is most overtime worked overall alright so we're back to um, a day question just put day as the row overtime is the sum and it looks like Fridays Unfortunately for these guys, sucks for them. Friday. How much overtime did IT assembly quality work in 2012? In this situation, we can set up department as a report filter and do multiple selections IT, quality, and assembly. Year, take out day. And the answer is 5,692.57. Copy and paste.
paste. How many times was overtime worked longer than three hours by IT in 2013? Let's do this on the data side here. Insert a uh, new column. And by the way, um, when I'm dealing with a pivot table that already exists, I insert the column uh, in between some other row or columns that are already there because if I added it to the end, I would have to update the pivot range to include that uh, new value. But if I insert it in the middle here, the pivot range automatically expands on its own. So we'll just do a simple flag here that it's if this is greater than three hours, then return one. If not, return zero. And it thought it was date format because it's next to this other date here. So let's just change that to a general format and set up over three as our filter take out department put in the value of one but we want count of occurrences so I'm going to change get rid of overtime and just put in anything else to count it and the answer is 776 Okay, hope you guys learned something about pivot tables, got a little practice. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and let me know what you want the next Excel topic to be. Alright, talk to you later guys.